Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. There is a WhatsApp chat between William Ruto's close confidence, a chat that has been leaked. So in this video, I want us to have a look at it. After which, as usual, we'll just see what it's telling us about William Ruto's political belief just days to the elections. You are seeing there, Team Hustler 22. Then we are seeing Dennis Itumbi, Emmanuel Talam, Eliudo Wallo. And I know there might be so many people in that group. Guys, we needed to wake up. From Standard and now BBC, this is getting out of hand. Dennis Itumbi. I spoke to my guys. They will try to divert attention by blogging and diverting attention from the issue. And then Hussein Mohammed, I'm getting calls every minute for Bloomberg people could ignore. But BBC, that's hard to miss. Eliudo Wallo, this is bad, guys. That fact checker thing is maiming us bad. Going to that debate was a wrong move. Then Emmanuel Talam. For Gashagwa, we will claim this state is using the courts to bring him down. But for this, we need something bigger to cover the shame. If that BBC article trends and the whole world sees how uninformed Doyen was, we have lost this election. That was up church. I tend to believe it might be talking about the presidential debate that William Ruto attended, and it might also be talking about yesterday's high court mm, just uh, finding uh, regarding Ashagwa to have irregularly acquired 200 million Kenya shillings and ordering Ashagwa to forfeit the said amount to the state. That's what I'm making of this world up chart. And you know from the presidential debate, I did an analysis in this forum immediately after William Ruto's presidential debate, where I did state that William Ruto performed very dismally. William Ruto performed far much lower than what Kenyans or even his foot soldiers and supporters even thought. And that's why largely we are not seeing his supporters actually coming out to celebrate the way they did celebrate with the one for Gashagwa. An indication that they largely, they were largely disappointed. Ruto never performed as was expected. And that's why I did state that that was a setup for William Ruto actually go and fail. William Ruto is not very good in looking at the bigger picture. He sneered himself <laughs> with his own trap. And from that link was captured. You know, there are some lies William Ruto uttered, or rather made during the, during the debate. Lies that fact checkers, be, fact, checker, fa, fact checkers have actually been exposing as lies. For example, William Ruto claimed that there are about 15 taxes being levied on fuel. Fact checker had it that there are only 8 taxes being levied on fuel. Not the 15 ones William Ruto was actually talking about. And then William Ruto, when he was challenged, to even name one levy, or rather one tax, being levied on fuel, William Ruto could not even name one levy, or rather one tax, being levied on fuel. And that also showed William Ruto as being very uninformed on government's operation. And he's the same person who wants to be the president, but he's not even aware on how many taxes are being levied on fuel. And the same William Ruto is promising to form a government eh, of Mamamboga, but he's not very keen on the issues affecting Mamamboga as far as the operation of the government. But Ruto is very keen on the political aspects the government may be staking to undermine him politically. Those ones he can tell you and he knows them. But now the... <laughs> They function to run the operations of the government that is actually making life hard for the common mananchi, 
for that Mama Mboga is saying he's going to form a government with, he doesn't know. So that also exposed William Ruto as being very, very uninformed. And I did state again that if you compare a William Ruto in a campaign rally and a William Ruto now challenged to actually explain the thing he has been saying in the political rallies, it also comes out clearly that William Ruto cannot really explain the things he has been talking out in the political rallies. If challenged now to explain them in a sober environment, Ruto cannot explain those things. And that also brought out William Ruto as a politician who is just lying to Kenyans. The things he's likely saying in the political rallies, those are not, that a, ma a majority of them, or rather most of them, are just propaganda. They are not the actual truth, or rather the factual truth. William Ruto has likely been lying. And from where I sit, you know, in this forum, we don't beat about the bush. And we don't actually massage anybody's ego here. We just state facts as they are. William Ruto as it is, in fact, I'm, I'm still just be, to be convinced how some Kenyans are still, as I talk, some are trusting William Ruto. While almost everything William Ruto is saying is almost clear and certain, he is lying to Kenyans. William Ruto, when they were forming government, let's start even from 2013. William Ruto had the best opportunity of <laughs> nominating, or rather he had the opportunity of nominating about half of the cabinet ministers. William Ruto only picked his challenging community as ministers. Some Kenyans are not seeing that. So even if he wins the presidency today, William Ruto will still do the same thing. That is a government that will likely be based, mm, it will be a challenging government. Mm. I'm saying that with a lot of confidence. Most government appointments will just be going to William Ruto's close associates and more so his challenging community. That's something Kenyans must take seriously. William Ruto for the time actually has also been in this Jubilee government. He and his team represent the bad face of this government in terms of corruption, in terms of police intimidation, in terms of threats and intimidation. William Ruto's wing is believed to, re to be representing that, that bad side of this Jubilee government. If you look at all known inciters who are very notorious in this Jubilee government, they are all in William Ruto's team. So if this is up, if William Ruto goes ahead to form government, with all these, <laughs> how can I call them? With all these goons, hmm? you can just imagine what kind of a nation or a country we shall be having. It will be a total authoritarian government. That's a fact, ladies and gentlemen. Back to that tweet. That tweet just exposes the fears again in William Ruto's camp. They believe and know William Ruto performed very dismally in the debates, and they know that should that be exposed, that dismal performance should it be exposed under the lies William Ruto actually made during the debates, is also going to injure William Ruto among some Kenyans who maybe care about integrity, because they are going to see William Ruto as not just being uninformed, but also a liar. And uh, let me state without even any fear that indeed William Ruto is a liar. Most of the things is, is actually talking about are just lies. And then yesterday again, we saw William Ruto attacking the president eh, yesterday in his college in Buckland. And he used a lot of vile and a lot of... Mm, the way he was speaking yesterday actually even, uh, has the potential of threatening even the peaceful co co coexistence in the Rift Valley. And some few hours ago, I did a detailed analysis on that, where I just explained also what that means politically. And yesterday still, some research firms released their opinion polls that only indicated Dail Odinga on the lead. One was 46, another Tifa had their poll showing Raila leading at 46. CAP, CAP, had their opinion poll showing Raila leading at 52%. These are all credible research firms and surveys. And they are all showing a clear trend. Raila Odinga 
beating William Ruto in these year's elections. So from where I sit, ladies and gentlemen, William Ruto in this year's election, his supporters should be told in advance not to cause chaos. In a free fair election, William Ruto cannot be Trail Odinga. Mm. That's a fact. And that is something William Ruto supporters should actually be made to understand. William Ruto seems to be interested in inciting his supporters to reject election results. That's what I'm seeing and making of his remarks yesterday in Nani County. And the mere fact that he made those remarks in his challenging Rift Valley was just a sign of that he's now resorting to his usual politics of intimidation. He wants to intimidate other non-challenging residents in Rift Valley actually to get scared just to vote for him alone. That's also what I'm seeing here. Otherwise, as I conclude, William Ruto's team is worried. Only eight days remaining to the election, William Ruto is sensing a looming defeat. And nothing will save William Ruto from that looming defeat. William Ruto is going to lose this year's election in the next eight days. I'm saying that with a lot of confidence. Let me leave it there, ladies and gentlemen. In case you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. And to our fans and subscribers here, I'm very much humbled, very grateful for the kind of support you are giving me here. God bless you. God bless Kenya.